existing. But they're still trying to re uh, vitalize what built the big bubble. And of course, that is the creation of money and the creation of credit. But the one thing they don't have any control over is the, um, is the restoration of confidence. Since we, the, country, the world has lost confidence in the dollar system, the only thing the politicians and the bankers have is to keep doing the same thing that gave us all the trouble, and that is print, print, print. And uh, this, this is what they're up to. I, I think it's just a matter of time now. I do not, I'm absolutely convinced in my mind, I may be wrong, but I'm absolutely can, convinced that they can't go back and pick up the pieces. Uh, they're, they're not, it's sort of like going back, the British wanted to go back and restore the, the uh, uh, pound at the old gold standard, which obviously didn't work. We can't go back to the old gold standard. We can't go back to the Bretton Woods. We can't go back to the post-Bretton Woods standard. And uh, therefore, something, something new has to come up. They're planning their, uh, they're, they're making their plans for what they think they should have. And, and I, I'm, I'm very confident that they would like to see uh, you know, a, a one, one world central bank. Uh, the dollar hasn't done the trick. Uh, the, we were entrusted to run the system, but now they will have to take it away from us and take it away from the dollar, which means if they get away with it, they might be able to keep things going or get things started again, but I think we're going to be in charge. I think that we are destined to be a much poorer nation. That is what the handwriting on the wall. Of course, the world is going to be poorer too, and the question is, is whether they can devise a system. So time is short, uh, and the arguments are, are very, very important, and uh, I think we're making great progress. But the, uh, the battle is going to be on the campuses. Uh, and uh, just hopefully uh, we have enough time to stimulate enough young minds that uh, they can get in the right positions uh, to give, give the right answers. This is one place where I've been tremendously encouraged on, on, on the campuses. Uh, dur during the campaign, and uh, there's a youth group, uh, the Young Americans for Liberty has been an uh, outgrowth of what we're doing, and, uh, and uh, I'm helping to the best of my ability to have them get organized and we will be testing that. We will be going to the campuses. If I enjoyed traveling more, I would do it more often. Uh, but uh, traveling, uh, traveling is a job for me. I've had a lot of nice invitations lately. I've, uh, and uh, I can't tell my wife all about these. But she might decide to like to take one. We had one from, <laughs> we had one from Hong Kong the other day, and uh, just this week I had one from Italy and uh, Turkey. We've had several in Eastern Europe, and. The way I see this is, you know, with the Internet, they do hear and, and, and understand what we're talking about. And, but it must be like 5 or 10 percent, maybe less, hopefully 10 or 15 or 20 percent, but obviously never, never a majority. But it isn't like it's uh, just in Auburn, Alabama. That isn't where it is. I mean, it is out there. And uh, the other day I was coming back from the Capitol on a uh, they were all, a bunch of men were all bundled up because it was very cold, and they, they came over and they were excited. They wanted to meet me. I said, where are you from? They said, New York. And I says, uh, what part of New York? Where were they? were from upstate. And I said, aha, uh -huh, you're from the part of New York nobody ever hears about. And I said, I know that you're out there, and I understand, because they were enthusiastic, and uh, yet they're still in the minority, you know. But once again, uh, we have been reminded very many times that the numbers, and I remember Leonard Reed saying this so often, it's not a numbers game. It's not a numbers game. You don't say, when are we going to get 51%? Well, we just need influential people, and that is what's happening. And that's why uh, the Mises Institute deserves support, because they are changing the numbers. I mean, all the people that have been helped to get their degrees and get teachers in the right places, that's where the, that's where the future is. And uh, right, right now, uh, it hasn't had a reflection in Washington, but it's starting to. It's starting to have a reflection. They're starting to ask about Austrian economics, and they're asking the right question. And uh, believe me, you, you can't have any influence until they start asking the questions. They're asking the right questions. They're worried and they're concerned. They know this system isn't, isn't working. And uh, I, am, I am encouraged in that sense. But it, it, in the other sense, though, I am very concerned because uh, it can get pretty rough. And my main goal is... Uh, of course, I want to live in a prosperous manner, peacefully, and, uh, and uh, have as much enjoyment as possible. Um, but 
it isn't the prosperity that motivates me. I do know that if prosperity is my goal, the freer the society is, the better it is for us. I, under, I under, understand that. But my biggest concern, of course, when I see what's happening is a threat to our personal liberty. And I have always argued, I would argue the case for liberty, because for me it's a moral issue, it's not a pragmatic issue. I would argue the case for liberty because I just want to be left alone. That's what I want to do. <laughs> But, but fortunately, we don't have to take that case because uh, not only can we be left alone, that is, what, that is the philosophy that takes care of the maximum number of people with the maximum amount of prosperity. But today, we live in an age where I think it's really coming down to the wire. I mean, uh, if we'd have had this climax uh, of, and, and, and dissolving of the system as we're having today around the world in 1971, we would have been in a lot worse shape, believe me. Uh, I, I just think we're in so much better shape now to argue our case. We have better methods of, of transmitting our information. I mean, it's, uh, I, I mean, we make fun and laugh sometimes at radio talk shows, but we've made a lot of use out of radio talk shows. But with the Internet and the communications that we have now, are just fantastic. I mean, the fact that somebody in Italy might want Ron Paul to come over there, that's pretty weird, you know. <laughs> but uh, but this, this communication thing is fantastic. So uh, there's every reason to be encouraged. I don't think uh, we have to worry about the philosophy. I believe that, uh, you know, probably in this room we can agree on 99% of the things because, you know, you don't have to be real smart to tell other people how to live. You just have to be smart enough to uh, lay off and leave them alone. I, I thought, you know, the, probably the most uh, significant statement I made to undermine the campaign, the presidential campaign in this day and age, was telling people, well, I, I would be president. I would serve as president. I want to be president. I said, but not because I want, for what I want to do. Because I don't want to run your life. I don't want to run the economy. And I don't want to police the world. I don't know how, what you want to do with your life. I don't know how to dictate to the economy. And I certainly don't want to be involved overseas. But you know, you can turn that around and say, not what you don't want to do. What do you want to do? Well, you want to preserve liberty. You want to preserve the greatness of this country. And in the meantime, we will protect the prosperity of this country. But if we concentrate on that ideal of liberty, I believe that we can find all our answers. Thank you very much.